What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Shells. Brian, uh, Doc Strange came out of nowhere in the news. We thought that whole thing was over, that we were never coming back to it. All of a sudden, he pops out of nowhere. Talking about they're going to be filming starting next year. I don't know how you got this written up. <laughs> I don't know how you got this idea, but supposedly we're going forward. Supposedly, right, Brian, this is still a rumor, correct? It is, but it is. I mean, Cumberbatch is the one who te- who is teasing it. So you're getting it from the star. This is not a podcast, like not us saying like, hey, we heard from someone. Like he told somebody in a public forum that his return as Doctor Strange would be a lot sooner than anything on the previous Marvel calendar would have led you to believe. Brian, do you, when I heard this, Brian, I said to myself, Doc Strange is back to destroy <laughs> what we know as the multiverse. And perhaps, Brian, um, as you mentioned in, in, before we got on, this coincides with the destruction of the past uh, movies in terms of X Men and everything that's going on, Deadpool having a, a, a hand in the destruction of the MCU. And this, Brian, isn't there a storyline in, in the Marvel comics that who destroys the MCU, Brian? Am I, am I bugging? No, I mean, I think, so this is, yeah, where this is definitely like the um, conspiracy nerd gen is looking around and what's <laughs> going on and saying there's something happening here that isn't like on the level, right? Because it's like, so on the one one the first kind of clue that we talked about in a previous show was you know they delay all these movies but then deadpool moves up and you're like well wait a minute why okay what's going on here and then we're like we start with oh okay you got hugh and ryan and they're they're gonna save the box office for the mcu but then the cameo rumor mill starts with deadpool 3. wait halle berry's got her storm hair back now we hear even jennifer garner might dust off the size ben affleck and then you hear everyone from the Fox X-Verse basically is going to make an appearance in Deadpool 3. Well, as you said, rightly said, there is someone in the Fox X-Verse who's capable of resetting things and wiping minds and screwing around with reality, right? Obviously, Professor X. And then now we hear Cumberbatch saying he's going to be on set for a project in 2024. Another character that we know I mean, shoot, in No Way Home, he played a willing part in screwing up, you know, the multiverse along with Spider-Man. I mean, we're basically one Scarlet Witch short from having all the characters we need to kind of like wipe out everything we know about the MCU. I don't know. that It's looking an awful lot like whatever's going on is intended to kind of course correct the entire universe without calling it the failure that it has seemingly become. And this is... And if they go ahead and this is done, I will be standing and clapping. Like, remember that scene in uh, uh, Best of the Best when when um, Dehan walks over to Tommy <laughs> and, tell, and the old man starts rising and clapping because he's so inspired by the, 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 the... That's how I'm gonna clap for that. Like, this was beautifully done. Because that's what it... This needs to go. And if they go in this direction, I'm here to see how it gets done. Because Deadpool, my friends, I don't care what you call this, this is a show, not a movie. This is a show. This is for us to go have fun, laugh, ridicule, and be done with the past. For us to move forward with something brand new and not with what we've gotten so far. Because it has been a tragedy. Yeah, listen, I mean, the other thing is, is um, we know, I mean, to Ryan Reynolds' credit and the way he has kind of handled this character, 
Nothing has been off limits in while and how they've broken the fourth wall in these two movies. And I would certainly give Disney a lot of credit if they allowed him to break the fourth wall and effectively savage what Marvel has done in his movie. Like if he basically comes out and like they start retro retconning some of what hasn't worked in phase four and they have him literally popping up and telling the audience, boy, that really sucked, didn't it? Like if he starts doing stuff like that, I will actually say like that's a a big slice of humble pie, but like pretty awesome if the studio is willing to do that to itself in order to try to get back on track. It definitely would make me more excited to see Deadpool 3. I mean, I'll see it anyway. But like, if you want this stuff to actually mean something, yeah, like have it all go up, have basically have it all in a giant ball of fire that like, you know, allows us a clear path forward. Great, I'm all for it. And like, I heard a rumor that like, I read a report that like, well, Strange must be doing a, you know, like a small role in something like Kang Dynasty. No way. Kang mm-hmm. Dynasty is on the shelf. That movie, there's nothing, there's no way Cumberbatch would know that he has a date to be on the set of a movie that just fired its writer and with the strikes going on just got delayed in 2026. Not a chance that that's the movie he's talking about. He's talking about something else, which may or may or may not be Doc Strange 3 being moved up to help with this <laughs> fiasco. Destruction. Yeah. I'm telling you, if that's what, if that is the route that they're going, hooray for them. I am with you. I just want to see how this gets done. And then, hey, if you're going to reboot, reboot with a Fantastic Four. Reboot with the X-Men. Where Cap is around. Hopefully they get that dude from Night Agent because he'd be, he be perfect. <laughs> he'd be perfect. And play around. You don't have to go into Origins. You don't have to do that. No. These guys are around. That's the beauty of it. They do anything right? but. Yeah, skip all the Phase 1 stuff because you don't have to do that again. Yes. So hope it's hope, Pablo. A ray, <laughs> like, light ray of hope. We're not we are not clinging to like the the Ryan Reynolds, Doc Strange like tag team of you know. You know I, I, can we yeah. read? That? Yeah. My thing, Brian. This is, and I'll be honest because uh, I think I've said all I've had to say with what we think Doc Strange and Deadpool is here to do. Um, one of them obviously is distract, and the other one is to destroy. And what we've gotten as of late, Brian, I I, 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 can't, I have to say, Brian, I don't care. Listen, I haven't even seen episode three of Secret Wars. Oh, is it Secret? No, sorry, sorry Secret Invasion. Oh, interesting. I that seen, is the I, best. I, that is the best episode, in my opinion. But yeah, I, I, I haven't I, seen it yet. Yeah, because I, I don't care. I don't. I, I I just don't care. Well, we, I thoughts? mean, do you want to just talk about that briefly here, like the the show, because it kind of sure. links to what we're talking about, because sure. it, it 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 ties to this idea of when everything is interconnected, it, it becomes problematic when the threads that you're building just aren't captivating audiences and aren't going anywhere. And I think Secret Invasion is running headlong into this problem in the sense that I think each episode has gotten progressively better. But the fundamental problem is irreversible, which is number one, this is setting this is some sort of link and arc to the Marvels, which is a bridge to nowhere. And number two is, you know, it, it kind of is like a almost a microcosm of what's going on. Like they've made a fundamentally flawed choice about Nick Fury's character, in my opinion, in this show, and that they can't save it, which is they basically have, spoiler alert, undermined everything we knew about Nick Fury's step ahead intelligence and chalked it up to he's had a bunch of scroll agents feeding him intel the whole time it was never him and i'm like i mean that's to me like a really fundamental rewrite of a character that's supposed to be this like genius super spy and we're being told yeah. that he's basically a puppet for this alien race that he happened to befriend in captain marvel he got banged you know what i'm talking about when i say that yeah he got 100 percent I mean, that's a spoiler alert for episode three. That's what got revealed was basically that, like, from the very beginning, he's had this team of scroll agents. And, and Ben Mendelsohn tells him, like, every advancement and promotion you've made and every big discovery you've been ahead of, it's been because of us. Wow. And it's just like, you're just like, well, what is this character then? 
This guy's supposed to be the ringleader for the Avengers. He's the one who's supposed to have seen the threats before they happen. And now we're being told he's just a dude who got lucky. Wow. But this is what I mean. It's like they make that choice. Now they're on that thread and they got to carry it through the show and carry it into the Marvels. And I'm like, but I'm out on that choice, right? It's kind of like the multi, like I'm out on what you've done with the multiverse, but you're trying to carry this forward to places I don't want to go. And so this goes to, yeah, if you have, if you're willing to bury the ego, you need to make hard course corrections. And the strikes are the perfect opportunity, in my opinion, to bury stuff that was on the calendar. Get rid of it entirely. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. Brian, if you have any questions for me before we move on? No, it's just, like I said, I think Secret Invasion has, there's, there's a, there's signs of a decent show, but it's built on top of a foundation to it that to me, it just doesn't make sense. Like I thought episode, like I like, I have liked the character that Kingsley Benadir, the main villain is playing. The more I spend time with Gravik, the more I'm interested in the actor and the character. Brian, have you said James Bond to yourself? So I, well, it's funny you said that. I, I actually was thinking to myself, where else can I, where else can I use him? Can I give him another role in the MCU or the, D, or the DCU? Cause I think this guy has it. He has it to play something. The Bond one, I'm not considered. That's an interesting, that's an interesting angle. But yeah, like he's a really interesting guy on screen. And he's quite honestly the MVP of this show. Yeah. But again, I just don't know like where he's going. I don't know where the character's going because the show's not written well enough for me to kind of be like, all right, this is awesome. And I feel like I'm <laughs> headed toward a great resolution. And that is disappointing. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah!